Next tonight, Fixing New Orleans Public Schools, Year Two. The News Hour Special Correspondent for Education, John Merrow, has been chronicling those efforts. And tonight, how rookie teachers are faring in the new school year. Superintendent Paul Vallis is feeling good. He's beginning his second year leading the Recovery School District, the lowest performing schools in New Orleans. At a rally, he praised his teachers for a year of progress. You did it. You did it. The increase in academic performance across the board, every grade, virtually every subject. And you know, high school test scores don't increase anywhere in the country except in New Orleans. High school teachers, stand up. Take a round of applause. Although test scores did go up last year, Vallis has his work cut out for him. 80% of students are still below grade level. This is the great experiment here. We are rebuilding a public school system from the ground up. No in the crowd are veteran teachers and first-time educators from organizations like Teach for America, who are fast-tracked into teaching for a two-year commitment. I need the legends. I need the superstars. There is no greater calling than education. No greater calling. Paul Vallis has already made a lot of changes. Laptop computers for high school students, regular testing, a standardized curriculum, an extended school day and school year. But in truth, the backbone of his plan is new teachers, young, idealistic, but inexperienced graduates of the nation's top colleges. He's really betting the farm that a steady stream of these young people can rebuild the New Orleans public schools. So right now we're driving to Carver High School. It's in the upper ninth ward. It's one of the lowest income areas of New Orleans. Daniel Hoffman just graduated from Yale. You know, I come from the suburbs. Everyone has a backyard, picket line fences, and the sense of having the ability to do anything. Here, it's, it's just sort of a, a, a totally different place. I think if we want to create a better New Orleans, education is the way to do it. This is how it's done, guys. Hmm? Also new to town is Princeton graduate Jaylon Erman. She's made a home with three other first-time teachers. You can make, it doesn't matter how you well, eat it, it'll yeah. taste the same. The whole aura of the city is all about change, all about reform. I never really believed that there, that there could be such an energy and, and, and excitement for change until I came here. Sitsi Marikur is a graduate of the University of Chicago. For me, it was this phenomenal opportunity to start fresh and to do something right and to show everyone else that you, you could fix an educational system. Welcome back to day two. After six weeks of training elsewhere, the Teach for America Corps members arrived in New Orleans for more instruction. It's this very high stakes test that if they don't pass it, they're not going to move on. A lot is riding on this. One clear message, it won't be easy. They know you're going to fail. And you, you have to have that idealism to bounce back from the failure and learn from it. I think it's vital for me to succeed. In my ordinary life, if I fail, I'm the only one failing. If I fail in this classroom, all my kids fail. That's what motivates me to succeed. It's that drive that Superintendent Paul Vallis is counting on. These young people come with so much energy and so much, so much dynamism and they're so optimistic. They have such high expectations and high hopes and I want to seize on that. After just eight weeks of training, it's time to teach. Everyone have a seat, start working on your worksheet. Everyone familiar with the leader? Raise your, hand, raise your hand. Give me a thumbs up if you're familiar with, with the leader, thumbs down if you're not. I just want to have a sense of where we are. I need everyone to give me either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I had a lot of trouble keeping kids on task, keeping them focused. I need you to be working on this stuff. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get it if, unless you keep on trying. I gotta be that much more on my game. I gotta get the kids up, moving around. I can't try and do one thing for more than a certain amount of time or else the kids will not be able to focus. So good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm gonna say good afternoon. 
You respond, good afternoon, all right? With oomph, okay? With power, with energy. So good afternoon. Yeah. Okay, and hopefully eventually I can teach you how to say that in another language so we can spice it up a little from day to day, all right? First, we're going to explore the benefits of a college education. I have a little activity I want 30 to minutes you. into the class, students aren't looking left or right, and it's, it's obvious that um, things are getting pretty tiring. So what happens to average earnings as one's level of education increases? What happens? Um, it increases, right? I'm going to have to work harder on doing more engaging activities. If I'm going to if I'm going to talk for a bit, I have to balance it with activities where students are also uh, talking amongst themselves. Good morning. Grab a power up and get started on it. Grab a power up and get started on it. Good morning. And what I want to do now is take about ten minutes to go over all of the expectations we have. We can't be late to class, so be here before the tardy bell rings, because when the bell rings, the door is shut and we're going to get started. And that's another one of our classroom expectations here, gentlemen, in the back, right? Please, please, please be respectful of each other, of me, and I think part of that is paying attention and looking up here while I'm speaking. One of the reasons why I'm having trouble getting control of my classroom is because this is the first time I've been in front of a large group of students. Later on, I met with seven of the new teachers. Would you characterize your first two days as successful? Um, I mean, they, were, they, were, they weren't easy. They were very difficult. Um, physically draining, um, emotionally draining, um, but I, lo I loved it. I haven't, have not had as much success as I'd like to have in the first two days. When I talk to them, when I'm in the classroom, I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? I told my kids today, when going over the rules, I don't like being a disciplinarian, but if I have to, I will. And I'm, I'm waiting internally in my mind, when can I start being nice, because I barely smile. I'm there to help them, but like, I can't engage them. They don't want to be engaged. I'm beginning to learn that a lot of these so-called problem behaviors will go away as long as they're engaged and interested. Make sure you put down the facts first, though. Who is The you? struggling rookies can take heart from this man, Harvard graduate Coleston Morgan. Everybody knows who this guy is. George Bush. Who is he? Our president. Our president Barack is our president. Hold on. You said he's not our president. Barack's our president. He's Barack president. Uh, Beginning his second year in Teach for America, Morgan says experience, momentum, and a connection with students seem to be paying off. I passed that, that sort of testing phase where you have to sort of build relationships with the students. I think they know what I'm, I'm in here for and that I'm here for them. But even with his success, Morgan is skeptical of Alice's reliance on inexperienced teachers. I don't think the answer is constantly bringing in 22-year-olds who are sort of starting at the very beginning of a learning curve. And unfortunately, too many of us, by the time we actually get it right, are on our way back out the door to something else. Morgan's criticism is shared by others in the education field. The rap against Teach for America is that you guys can spend two years and put it on your resume and go to some fancy law school. I've heard it called Teach for a while instead of Teach for America. Even if it is two years, we're still, at our age, I think we're doing the most we can to affect the most lives. This is what I'm here for. Like, I don't need to go home to a family. For these two years, these kids are all that I'm focused on. Their boss believes that this dedication is bound to pay off. I expect double-digit growth this year. Now, I'll go out on a limb now and say that I expect big gains both in... Uh, in overall test scores and in graduation rates. I expect it. Hopefully it'll be double digits starting with a two <laughs> or a three. Paul Vallis has a lot riding on the results. With this likely to be his last year in New Orleans, they will be an important measure of his success.